Hello and welcome back to AP Computer Science Lesson 7. Today we're going to be discussing methods. So methods are also called functions and they're very similar to functions in math. They perform a set of operations when they're called upon. And typically you input some data to it so you can perform some operations on it. And typically or sometimes you can output some data as well. So methods typically consist of a header and a body. So the header is this first line right here. I'm going to try to underline all of this. And the body is right here, the code that's going to be executed. Some important features to the method are going to be the access modifier. We're going to talk more about those in the next video. The return type, which is going to be uh, the type of data that we're going to be returning from this method, or what it's going to be outputting, essentially. Uh, the method name, that's pretty self-explanatory, and the arguments that we're going to pass in, if we have any. So here's a simple example of a method. In this example, we add up all of the elements of an integer array. So here we have a public method. We'll get to that in the next video. Don't worry about it. It returns a type int because we're returning a sum of integers. We have the name, we have it called sum, and we're passing in an array of integers, and we're going to call this array list. So here we initialize the sum variable, and we're going to call it sum value, and we're going to set it equal to zero. Then we're going to iterate over the list with a for each loop, as demonstrated here. If you don't remember what a for each loop is, please watch lesson six. In each step of the for each loop, we're simply going to add the current value of the list to some value, which is the sum. Once we're done iterating over the list and adding each value to some value, we're simply going to return some value. So sometimes methods don't need to return anything. We just need to call a set of instructions. So you can use void for your return type in these scenarios. As you can see, we have our access modifier public. Don't worry about that too much just yet. We have void, which is that return type, signifying that we're not returning anything. Then we have the name tempf, and we're passing in an integer, and we're going to call that integer temp. This method converts a number from Celsius to Fahrenheit and prints it on the screen. So we do the conversion here, and we print it on the screen here. Notice that we're not returning anything like we did in the last example when we returned the sum value. So no return in this example because we're using a void return type. So sometimes you want to perform the same tasks on different types of data. You can overload methods by changing the parameters. So for instance, notice that the headers are almost identical between this first method and this second method. However, the only difference is the parameters. As you can see here, we're passing in two integers in the first method and three integers in the second method. Even though they're both performing the average, in the first example, the average is computed for the two numbers, and in the second example, the average is computed for three numbers. The compiler is going to choose which average method to use um, based off of the parameters being passed in when the method is called. So if we have a function a, or method a, and we pass in A and B. The compile and, and our code, and we have a semicolon here. The compiler is going to choose uh, which average method to use once it gets to this line of code. So we're going to do another example. 
These are two methods that print out the contents of, integer, of arrays. In the first example, we have a string array. In the second example, we have an integer array. Notice how we use the for each loop in both examples. This is a very useful tool. And for each iteration of this for each loop, we simply print out the content as seen here, and we add a space. So we print out the content and add a space for both of these. The compiler knows which one to choose based off of the parameters when the method is called. So it's important to realize sometimes that when we call a function, we're simply copying the data when it is passed in if it is a primitive type. So a primitive type essentially is anything that isn't an object. So that would be integers, floats, doubles, booleans, and so forth. So notice here that we have a method called fail method, and it takes in two numbers, a and b, and it simply adds 5 to a and subtracts 2 from b. So the result is as follows in the comments. Notice that when we try to use fail method here, when we declare an integer a to be equal to 2 and an integer b to be equal to 6, when we call the method, a is passed in here to be 2, 6 is passed in here, a becomes 7, b becomes 4, but since only copies are passed in, when we print out a and b, 2 and 6 are printed out on the screen. So in our final slide, we're going to discuss the main method. So the, your Java programs begin running from the main method. And in Java, the main method will always look like this. Public. Static. We'll get to that later in the next uh, lecture. Void, remember that return type. Main, and it passes in a string array of arguments called args. And then we have some code to run. The main method is called the insertion point of your program. This is where all the code begins to execute. So every program that you create, regardless of how many classes and files and whatnot, regardless of whatever else you have, every program needs one, and only one. The, main, the class that contains the main method is called a driver class, and classes will be covered in the next video. This is the end of Lesson 7. Please be sure to rate, comment, favorite, subscribe, the whole deal. Share it with your friends. Thank you.